any lecturer who wants to teach a course on qualitative research, such as this one, has to start with ontology. And why? Because qualitative researchers love these elephants. They love the stuff about philosophy of science. They think it's really important. I think it's really important too. But we also need to look at it from a more relative point of view. What I want to tell you is related to the story about the elephants. With the story about the elephants, um, I shared several questions with you. And I hope you've been thinking about it. And if you did, then uh, what I'm going to tell you about ontology relates to the story I told you. When talking about ontology, I make a distinction between two types of ontology, philosophical ontology and social ontology. When talking about philosophical ontology, we talk about the state of being. Is there such a thing as being? Are we real? Is this screen for real? Is my face for real? Now that's philosophical ontology. And uh, the discussion in philosophical ontology about being and the state of being is whether there is a reality out there or uh, when, whether there's not. And there's a whole library written about this, and I'm not going to discuss that. What I'm going to discuss is ontology for social actors, social ontology. And we have the same kind of dimensions, but there's a difference here, because now we're not talking about reality in general, we are talking about social reality. And some researchers would say that there's a single social reality out there. And we can, or we cannot, research it. But there's a single social reality out there with social facts. Uh, but there are also, also other researchers who say, well, there's not a single social reality out there. There are multiple social realities out there. And in this lecture, I would like to explain how this dimension, as well as this dimension, lead to a variety of views on ontology for social actors. Because this second dimension, dimension is a dimension of independence. Is the social reality out there and is it independent from us or is the social reality dependent from us? Are we creating social reality in interaction as local accomplishments? Are we creating multiple social realities or a single one? And there are different stances on ontology for social actors. And the first stance I would like to discuss is the simplest one in explaining. It's objectivism, or sometimes called realism. Objectivists would say that social phenomena exist as social facts. It's a social fact that some people are Dutch and other people are not. I'm Dutch, and I'm happy to be Dutch. It means I was raised in a Dutch family. I was enculturated as a Dutch person, so I'm culturally Dutch. This social phenomena, being Dutch, is pretty independent from social actors and what we try to accomplish. Now, it's in your blood, probably, or at least in your social ties. So an objectivist would say there is such a thing as a cultural identity. It's out there, it's a social phenomena, it can act as an independent or dependent variable. It's out there. Now, there's also another point of view, and that is more the constructivist point of view. A constructivist would say, well, social reality is not out there, it is created. It's dependent on social actors. So social actors, while talking, while discussing, while lecturing, create stuff, such as Dutchness. I told you I'm Dutch, but why am I Dutch? Well, I'm Dutch because it's really handy to use Dutchness, Dutch cultural identity, as an example to explain objectivism and realism, and probably also to explain uh, constructivism, because this Dutchness is used rhetorically by me now. And in using this, this example of Dutchness, I create interactionally with you the idea of social phenomena as stable facts. A constructivist says, there's not a single social reality out there, there are multiple social realities, and people use different aspects in local 
accomplishment, local interaction and locally construct new realities. So my Dutchness now is a construct I use now. Some other time I would probably use some other aspect of Dutchness. Now the third view is the view that indeed there is a single social reality out there. There is such a thing as Dutchness, but it is dependent, but it is used. It works, a more pragmatist uh, view. And this more pragmatist view says, well, social phenomena are there only insofar they work. So, um, and there are partly or pretty dependent on interactional accomplishment. Not completely, but there is something like Dutchness out there but you can also use it as an actor and create a bit of your own. Now this is a very broad stroke and a very crude way of explaining ontology, but at least you have to remember for ontology we have two different dimensions. The dimension on social reality and the dimension on the independence of social actors. Leaves us with just one spot here. Now please think if there are multiple social realities or no social reality at all and they are independent from us, what do we need to put there? And you know what? I really don't know. <laughs>